in the beautiful set of Vegas Life TV studio designed by international fashion designer David Tupas. And this is Vegas Vibes, a weekly TV show that gives you a peek at what's grooving and brewing in the music, pageantry, and live production scenes in and around the Vegas Valley. On Vegas Vibes, we love Las Vegas and we call it the awesome city known as the entertainment capital of the world las vegas is one of the world's best destinations with mega concerts and conventions all nestled in the best resorts in the globe las vegas is truly a global brand yet not too many people really know how wonderful this city is and its people are and this is what my show is all about i'm your host esmeralda Podiller gold some exciting news when we come back so stay with me staying with me. Do you know I grew up with Hello Kitty? Hello Kitty was added to Sanrio's lineup in 1974 as a coin purse in Japan designed by Yuko Shimizu. In the US, Hello Kitty started appearing in 1976. For three years later, Hello Kitty opens its very first cafe in Nevada, celebrating all things Hello Kitty, which is located in between New York, New York, and the Park MGM in Las Vegas. The widely successful restaurant chain and store will feature exclusive treats and merchandise. The grand opening was held at the Park Las Vegas with the iconic Hello Kitty herself in attendance and gave away gifts to the first 50 guests. Craig Takeguchi, CEO and Head of Business Development at Sanrio said that Hello Kitty Cafe brings fans of all ages together and provides a special venue for them to connect with Hello Kitty brand. He said that the park is a prime location for them to make their debut in Las Vegas and that they welcome guests to visit from around the world. I miss this grand opening but I still would like to go visit soon. Moving on to the local shows in the Vegas Valley, remember the good old days when you could walk up to a jukebox, slip a few quarters in, and let the good times roll? Thankfully, Scott Bradley's postmodern jukebox hasn't forgotten about them and are bringing their cross-generational tunes to Vegas for all to enjoy. Scott Bradley's postmodern jukebox plays five days weekly at the 10 AK in the Mirage MGM Hotel, Las Vegas. What's your favorite era of music? Is it the Roaring Twenties, the Swinging Sixties, or maybe you're just a sucker for contemporary pop? Whatever tune floats your boat, Scott Bradley's postmodern jukebox has you covered. This collection of talented singers, musicians, and dancers combined to create the authentic concert pizzazz of each era. It's like jumping into a time machine with slapping tunes, and the best part of all this, no two concerts are are the same. Check out new songs, new dance moves, and different routines Tuesdays to Saturdays weekly. So, who's this magician called Jen Kramer? Even if you and I don't know about her, it doesn't mean she's unknown. She reaped the 2016 Female Magician of the Year Award, her Merlin Award, or too many to count appearances on shows like The Masters of Illusion or Penn and Teller. Oh yeah, she stows all that and a bag of chips. But don't be fooled by by her super sweet accomplishments or her Yale University degree, she's all about getting audiences involved, cracking a few jokes, and making some jaw drop. The magic of Jen Kramer, Four Days Weekly at the Westgate Cabaret of Westgate Las Vegas Resort and Casino. Guys, check her out. And finally, for men who hate women with hot flashes, mood swings, memory loss, and weight gain, watch The Menopause, the musical show at the Harris Cabaret of Harris Hotel, Las Vegas. Menopause, the musical, turns aging woes into a hilarious comedy with four wacky characters confessing their over-the-hill experiences to the tunes of 
popular 50s, 60s, and 70s songs. The show is filled with solo and chorus tunes that jump between the all too real topics of hot flashes, Prozac, and food. The show manages to provide different outlooks on aging while leaving no topic. No matter how taboo, untouched, go for it, man. Well, these are just some of the hundreds upon hundreds of live shows in Vegas and are some of the reasons why over 3.5 million visitors come to Las Vegas each month. And Vegas Vibes is happy to give both Las Vegas residents and visitors an idea of how to enjoy Las Vegas. And while we know most visitors come to watch the mega concerts, they are now beginning to check out the local scene as well. When we come back, I'll be interviewing someone special. I'll be right back before you know it, so stay there. Welcome back to Vegas Vibes. Here with us today is an amazing vocal impressionist by the name of Mr. Billy Fisher. Hello, Billy. How are you? Hi, I'm doing good. How are you? I'm fine. Thanks Thank for having you. me. Thank it's you. a pleasure having you on Vegas Vibes. Kindly describe to us what exactly do you do? What do you mean by a vocal impressionist? Well, it, it happened about, uh, I want to say, 10 years ago. Um, I've been in bands for about 35 years and play uh, bass and guitar. Pretty and, much all your life. And sang, yeah, pretty much. Um, and uh, I just happened to run across doing a solo thing to tracks. It was through a radio personality um, in back in Cleveland. Um, and I ended up starting it right there, the vocal impressionist thing. I always grew up singing Frankie Valli and, and Johnny Mathis, I mean, all these uh, music people that that have great vocals so I always tried just copying them so when I got to the point of, of actually doing it I'm like well I'm gonna try to just imitate like I did when I was a kid and it, it works I mean it's not perfect not, nothing's perfect but it, it works people think they're listening to the radio when if I'm in a corner restaurant doing my thing they so think, if you close your eyes you yeah they th I thought the picture. radio was playing so that's a great compliment because that means I'm doing my job you know I call what I put into it flavors, you know. It's it's like the song, but then I put my own flavors to it. Little bits here and there. Your little, your little originality. Yeah, originality, exactly. Yes, and uh, I think you have mentioned that it was actually in your family. Everybody sings in the family. Yes, like yes. It, it goes back to my mom who wrote music note for note. She uh, arranged a lot of stuff, and she couldn't sing a lick, though. But uh, she had a 45 record put out uh, back in the day in, in Ohio, and uh, it never went anywhere, but she instilled in, in all of us kids. And then my oldest brother's 10 years older than me, so he turned me on to the classic rock stuff. I got a sister who was in the Motown and bubblegum music. I, I love that stuff. So I, I, I just started getting involved in all kinds of music, and that's what enables me to to enjoy what I do. Yeah. So you're originally from Cleveland, Ohio? Cleveland, Ohio, Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, yes. And you've been pretty much uh, singing all your life yes. with your family, and you have four brothers that you form a group or a band. Yes, I was in a, I was in a, a band early on uh, called Lost Children. We uh, donated a lot to children's charities with what we made. It's amazing. And then from there, I went into another band, and then I was in a doo-wop group. Uh, and, but my brothers and I, we never really got together as a band to play out until later in life because we all had jobs and so what you call the Fisher the Fisher brothers, brothers yes uh, so it was a great joy even though we did it only for about five years till I moved out I was the one that broke up the band because <laughs> I was moving out here but I enjoyed it three-part harmony you know of all kinds of music and it's it was enjoyable I miss them but I love it out here and uh, so what brought you to Las Vegas um, my buddy from my very first band the Lost Children band uh, um, he moved out here about 18 years ago um, he got remarried I came out to his wedding and I Vegas I love it so I ended up uh, making that plan it took a five-year plan took seven years to move out here but I finally did it and uh, I don't regret it I love it out here I love the dry heat over the humidity back home in Ohio um, and I just love the vibe 
I love the Vegas vibe. Yes, yes. absolutely. You know, can't go wrong with Vegas vibes, no. especially with what you do. This is a per perfect place, right? Yes. And can you tell us about your album? Um, well, it's something I put together. I, I, I want to. Um, I wanted to, my favorite type of singers, falsetto singers, Frankie Valli. Um, there's uh, Lou Christie on there, Del Shannon. Uh, it's just those falsetto singers, uh, the tokens. I, I so I decided my very first album of my own solo stuff I'd, I'd like to just dedicate it to them and that's the tracks that are on there are all their songs that I re-recorded and uh, I, I dedicate it to them because that's really what I like to do is the falsetto stuff is is enjoyable and a lot, lot of, not a lot of people could do that so exactly yeah. so having said that can I ask for a little sample from well, you I'll do a little tokens and you'll know this song <laughs> So it's just like, uh, I mean, it's really fun. It's, it's enjoyable. So great. Thank you. So um, did you go to school for that, to hone your talent? I did not. Um, when I was with my first band, I ended up losing my voice. Um, so I, I went to a vocal coach, an opera coach, um, at a music settlement back home, and he taught me how to breathe properly, and that's what I was doing wrong. Um, so once I learned that, then that was uh, you built your strength. <clears throat> yes, yes. It's just your falsetto. Yes, that and uh, just knowing how to breathe, you can hold notes out longer. Um, it's just uh, it's something that is always with me now, and I, I just make sure that I do my vocal warm ups and what have you, uh, just to make sure that because your your voice is your instrument, just like a regular instrument. If you don't take care of your voice, then you're not gonna you know you're just gonna be a slacker and not rehearse like you should be um, you know so that's what I do and it, it pays off in the long run so what do you do to keep your voice crystal clear well um, when I those notes when I moved out here I ended up getting a polyp on my vocal cord they call it the Vegas voice or Vegas throat and I've heard Celine Dion went through it and, and uh, Wayne Newton so I went to the vocal doctor and uh, instead of trying to have surgery I have a lot of exercises that I do now and that shrunk it and I, I actually blow into a straw with water and I do that and, and, and a lot of people think what are you doing that for but it actually you're Help the way you're doing it yeah you're, you're helping your voice and so I do that every day um, there's certain foods you need to stay away from there are certain stretches to do so I do that every day and uh, sounds like if someone wants to uh, get better at their singing they need to talk to you because you're very you have that knowledge well they need to do that yeah and if they don't um, and they think they're old because I you know I'm 55 years old you know I'm, I'm and now I'm over my height. Uh, <laughs> um, and uh, when I hear old timers say I can't sing like that anymore, I used to back in the day, but these are people that might be smoking or drinking too much. It's like, no, you just health. didn't take care of yourself, yes. you know, otherwise, you, you know, so, so far so good. I'm going to keep trying to hit those notes. So who are your biggest influences besides your uh, Oh, there's mom. so many of them. Like I said, uh, my brother turned me on to to uh, uh, classic rock, Crosby, Stills and Nash, and American Eagles, because those are vocal harmony type of groups. And then Frankie Valli with that falsetto voice and just Johnny Mathis that, look at me, I'm as happy. I just love the way he does all that. So I, I, I love all kinds of vocalists. Uh, I'm, but yet, I, I love music in general too, the instruments that are played. Uh, jazz and, and stuff like that. I'm currently um, in a, a uh, band right now um, playing the part of David Crosby in a Crosby, Stills and Nash tribute band. So I have these taller shoes, I, w I play this some guitar, I have this hat with hair and, and I have to grow my bushy mustache and, and play Almost all the crap. Almost an Yeah, exactly. So I, I, we had a sold out show at the Sun Coast Casino just a couple months ago. We have another show um, next month um, here at um, it's the East Side Cannery and then we're going to Long Beach, California. Um, so I'm very happy to be a part of that band. but. It's not only that, I want to do some more of what I do solo. I just want to get involved in all kinds of things, and Vegas is, is the, the place, place to, to be. be. Yeah. Yes. So when did you realize that this is uh, 
what you wanted to do for the rest of your life. Did, do you do this one full time? I do now. I have a lovely wife who has the day job and she's affording me to just get my feet wet here. It's a big city. I'm a little guy. I, I don't want to, you know, be Wayne Newton or no, nobody like that, but I just want to play my part. And I know I fit in some place and wherever it takes me, she, she backs me up 100%. And, uh, so I'm, I'm very uh, happy Lucky for that. Lucky to yes. have a very supportive Very much wife. so, yes. Yes, um, I have two grown children from a previous marriage. They're back in Ohio. I got uh, my first granddaughter, uh, my first grandchild. So uh, they knew I was coming out here, and uh, my my wife now just has never been married. She uh, had a lot of cats, and so she goes, go on, get it out of the house. I'm happy with three cats and, and the TV. You know, make that money, she says, make that money. But she supports me. She comes out uh, as much as she can to my shows, and uh, I'm, I'm very lucky well, to have her. Well, to her for yes, very lucky being to have a her. very loving wife yes. and supportive of all your dreams. So speaking of dreams, I know you said you don't want to be really big, but what's really the goal, your future plan? Well, you know what, it's follow your dreams. I've heard that a lot, and growing up, I, I didn't know where that was. I know right out of high school, um, I had I was in choir and stuff like that, and there was a buddy of mine who went right to, um, he did some uh, cruises and stuff. Now, if there was a dream, I'd like to do a cruise. I'd like to entertain on a cruise. Um, so I guess that's a dream, but yet uh, I wanted to go to clown college too and be a clown and be shot out of a cannon in the circus. <laughs> so, I mean, to me it's wherever life takes me. I mean, I'm living the dream right now, basically. Um, just being here and being alive and healthy and, and just wherever life takes me, that's where I'll go. With Give it a chance to collaborate with any artist, famous or not, who would you like to collaborate with? Uh, Boy, that's a tough one. It really is. Um, I, because I love vocal harmony stuff, and even though I enjoy being a lead singer and being out front, I love harmony. So it would have to be, I mean, it could be Frankie Valley, it could be any groups that, that I grew up with, just to sit down and, and I sing a part, you sing a part, and the other person sings a part. And, and just have that sound is just phenomenal. Beach Boys, it would be anybody like that that vocal oriented, and, and I would love to do that, and that would make me happy more. You also play musical instruments. Right? I play some bass and I play acoustic guitar, but everything's by ear. I mentioned earlier my so mom wrote it. note for note. I can't do that. I, everything's by ear. I got to listen to it and then pick it out that way. Um, but uh, I, I enjoy playing it. It's a love hate relationship, I'd say, with the instrument because. Singing is more natural. I can hit harmony parts just like that. I don't have to really work on it. If I listen to the song a couple times, I got it. Um, whereas trying to pick out parts on an instrument, that takes a little more time. So where do you perform in town? I play at a uh, regular place, or a regular place. It's an Italian place in Henderson. It's called Giuseppe's. Um, it's an Italian restaurant. And they uh, they have Cleveland roots. That family uh, were from Cleveland. They had a restaurant out there. They moved out here pro over 20 years ago and opened up a couple of restaurants. And uh, they gave me the opportunity to perform at their restaurant. So I've been there for a year and a half every Saturday since I moved out here. Um, and then I, I played at uh, the um, well Orleans. I mentioned I sit in with a lot of band band people. Um, the uh, Suncoast Casino. They have an afternoon every Wednesday, every other Wednesday. Um, Ed Matthews is the producer, so I've been involved in about six variety shows for him, um, which is three or four other entertainers. They have a backing band. Um, I've done a show at the Bootleggers for a USO uh, for military. Um, and been involved in that. Uh, so I'm getting my feet wet in a lot of areas, uh, and because I've done that, that's how I got involved with the Crosby, Stills & Nash project that I'm part of. So I'm, I'm willing to do any, I might even be part of a Bee Gees tribute, oh, cool. where I shave everything off, put a toupee on, and sing some Robin Gibb, because I love uh, the Bee Gees stuff as well, and, and because I could sing those falsetto parts. Um, uh, there might be a chance I might be subbing for that. So be on the strip, you be able to perform. Yeah, wherever, you. you know, I, I told my wife I'd love to just go to Fremont Street and be one of those street performers. She, now you're not being, you're not going to sit next to some guy in a, in, you know, dressed inappropriately, you know, singing. 
but there's some good entertainers out there that really, and you never know who's watching you. So your passion is just the yeah. passion is just to entertain. Just entertain. You know, it, I realize doing this as a solo, I realize I'm more than just a musician or a singer. I call myself an entertainer because I like being goofy. I like uh, the comedy side of things, and I just play it by ear, whatever comes out or whatever happens. And I, I just like that spontaneity of stuff, you know. How would you like to be remembered in this lifetime? Well, for me, it'd have to be uh, just being a, a good father to my children. Um, I grew up from like a broken home. I mean, even though I have six brothers uh, and sisters combined, my, my da father died when I was young, so my mom tried to make things work, and it ultimately didn't, so we were kind of split up uh, when I was a little younger. So. I made sure when I had my children that I would do the best for them. You know, although I did get divorced, but they know that they're my pride and joy, and uh, and first and foremost, a, a great father. Secondly, just a, like you mentioned earlier, just a humble person. I I, I want to make sure that uh, you know I have faith. Uh, I think I believe there, there's a God above, and uh, you know I don't uh, attend church every Sunday, but I have good spiritual. Um, you know, in my heart, and I just mean well to everybody, and I wish everybody well. You know, as a musician, um, I back everybody up, and and I try to just keep myself humble, and I don't talk about things. I don't like gossip. I just just want to be a good person, and uh, so that's what I want to be remembered for. And, um, just being being nice to everybody, whatever side you're on, or whatever part of the world you're you're with. I just want to be a good person. It's very admirable of you. Oh, thank you. So if you would suggest any advice or words of wisdom to anyone, what would it be? Uh, for for young kids, um, just um, just be be a humble person. If you have the talent, um, you can you can know that you have that talent. You can have a little bit of an ego, but make sure you, you you're no better than your next song or next performance so make sure you critique yourself always you know you do your, do a song and you might think you did great but step back a little bit and say okay it's, be critical of yourself because i know i am and and just make sure that there's if there's any corrections go ahead and try to make it for the next time and, and better yourself you know i mean there's things that you know you're going to do every time you're going to screw up but that's life, you know. I mean, you will make those mistakes, but uh, just be humble and, uh, you know, just to, uh, enjoy your performance. Because if you enjoy it and you do it from the heart, that's what people are going to see, and they're going to they're going to see that. And so that's what I try to instill in others: just enjoy it. Don't look out at the audience and and have people say, "Are you looking at me? Are, how am I doing?" No, don't do that. Just do it from the heart, and people will, will see that and they'll enjoy you for doing that. Great advice. Well, kindly invite everyone. Where can they find you? I have a website. It's called littlebillyfisher.com. My last name is F-I-S-C-H-E-R. There's a guy in California who has the same name, so he has a website of uh, billyfisher.com. Uh, but go to my website at www.littlebillyfisher.com, and, and I have some videos on there. I have to update it. I have uh, performances of where I'm going to be, and uh, so check that out. And uh, I have a, a CD that I have that uh, it's been out about a year and a half ago. Uh, I did that back home in Cleveland. So I have those available at shows. Um, uh, so if, if people want them, and, and I'm hoping somewhere down the road to, to do another CD of maybe Motown stuff, because uh, I just love all kind of genre of music. So this one was falsetto. If I can do um, Motown and then maybe classic rock for another one, and and just have fun with it. Thank you so much, Mr. Billy Fisher. Thank I you. wish you continued success. Thank you. And I you appreciate your time. Thank you. Have a great day. I would like to thank my award of sponsor, Anne Fontaine. Anne Fontaine is located at the Forum Shops in Catch me again next week as I feature another amazing artist here on Vegas Vibes. Take care, everyone. Jingles are the way of life to sell everything from clothes, products, and houses. Jingalicious has been there for many corporate companies to bring them the customers they need to thrive big all year round. Jingalicious can create unique sound designs, jingles, and custom songs. Mention this video commercial and get any of our services for only $500 each. 
a savings of thousands of dollars. We want to invite new clients to Jingalicious to make their dreams or business succeed with Jingalicious. Call us now at 702-302-9212. That's 702-302-9212. Or visit our website at www.jingalicious.com. Jingalicious. Our jingles are ready when you are. Jingalicious. Buying, keeping, or selling your home is one of the biggest decisions you and your family need to make in your lifetime. Specify a home inspector trusted by the Greater Las Vegas Association of Realtors. F10 Inspection Services has been serving the Las Vegas real estate industry for many decades, which secures all inspections with a $10,000 honor guarantee. F10 Inspection Services, proudly Asian American. Call 702-374-7377 now. I hope you enjoyed this week's episode as much as I did sharing the vibes of Vegas. And time really flies when you're having a grand time. Promise to join me again next week on the same fabulous ACTV channel. And to all our global viewers out there, let me remind you that Las Vegas is not just about the world-renowned strip or the famous Fremont Street experience in the vibrant downtown district. It has real people, a lot of them musicians, live entertainers, and those involved in the world of pageantry. And to the people here in the Valley who work hard each day to make Las Vegas a global brand. I would like to feature you and your cool story right here on Vegas Vibes, either on the ACTV studios or at your workplace. If you believe that's you, please email me now at esmeralda at actvlv.com. Once again, I'm your host, Esmeralda Padilla-Gold. Thank you for watching. TV.